Mayor Hassler. Here. Alderman Smith. Here. Alderman Mooney. Here. Alderman Donovan. Here. Alderman Jokers. Here. Alderman Jones. Here. Alderman Stoopy. Here. Alderman Prince. Alderman Rosica. Mayor, we have a quorum. Very good. Everybody had a chance to look at the agenda? No approval. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Very good. Is Mr. Bernie Nager here this evening? There he is. Come forward. David Bola, can you yes, come up here also? Certainly. 30 years of dedicated service. <laughs> Mark, you going to take a picture? Huh? Yeah. So this is a certificate of appreciation awarded to Bernard Nager. On behalf of the City of St. Genevieve, I would like to express my gratitude and appreciation for 30 years of service on the St. Genevieve Board of Adjustment. Thank you very much for your service. You're not required to stay, Bernie. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks again, Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. All right. That'll take us to the uh, city administrator's report. Okay. Um, I met with another developer on the Progress Park property that uh, was referred to us by Alderman Smith. And uh, he's uh, called me and asked for additional information, so that's another possibility. Uh, we will be having closed sessions to talk about the disposition of that property after uh, after the regular meeting. Uh, the water tower welding is continuing. Um, Steve reported to me that uh, he's been out there and they're going to be they're going to be going vertical here probably next week, so it's going to start going up. Uh, I had consulted with Cochran because concerned about not concerned about it, but to, to make sure that there's a third party examination of the welds because that's pretty important and they do an x-ray test and, 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 and those now have been done. Uh, I'm still pursuing this fish and wildlife acquisition of property on the um, east side of the levee. Uh, figuring out a legal description for what was acquired by the Joint Levee Commission has proven more problematic than I had expected. Uh, so I think as an alternative, I've kind of put the burden back on the Fish and Wildlife Commission and said, if you want to acquire a portion of this property, you define what it is and come back to us with your proposal, and they're amenable to this. Uh, and then we'll, we'll worry about how to transfer the balance of the property later. And uh, so they went over to the courthouse and called Dave Weber, and I think they're going to try and come up with a description and then uh, we'll have that Joint Levy Commission reconvene and talk about what reservations need to be put in that conveyance so that the levy district has what they need to do their work. And we'll get, we'll just, we'll get that going and then we'll worry about the rest of it later. The, uh, we had our formal meeting of the uh, downtown TIF Commission. Um, there's this issue of sequestering properties so that they will sink or swim on their own merits without having to worry about the performance of the overall district. Uh, they set a deadline of November 13th for people to let me know <coughs> if uh, they wanted to be considered for being sequestered. Um, in, uh, if, if, that's supposed to be an if one is received. Uh, Anyway, we're scheduling a, a, a meeting on the 14th to consider the revision of the boundaries with those properties being considered. Then uh, we'd have a public hearing, and then we would, after the public hearing, respond by making whatever changes might need to be made, but uh, come to you by December 13th with a recommendation from the commission. The um, park board met to consider the uh, uh, 
proposal from AT and T. Um, Representative is here tonight. Since it's a, uh, a real estate lease question, uh, we're going to reserve that for closed session after the after the regular meeting. Um, the um, I had some an engineer look at uh, the sidewalk proposal that I mentioned to you last uh, time we met, and they uh, proposed a project that was four hundred and fifty three thousand five hundred ninety two dollars, which is more, not exactly what I anticipated, <laughs> but the the main problem was a new bridge over over the creek. So I called them and said, you know, there's already a bridge over the creek, and they know about it. I mean, they know it's there. And uh, I said, you know, maybe we could work with George Fett to put the trail kind of along the creek on their property, connect up with the existing pedestrian bridge, and then do a <coughs> sidewalk from there. And that would take out that 150 or some major portion of that 150 thousand dollar figure. We probably have to do some renovations to the existing bridge, so they sent a guy down today to evaluate it, and they'll let me know tomorrow if it's if it can be made ADA uh, compatible, compliable. So uh, that's really the issue of whether it can it can meet the ADA standards. Um, so that, uh, in addition to that, I've come up with a couple of things that happened since I wrote this report. Uh, Back when we bought our new software package, we purchased the software to um, do online billing, and we implemented it first in the court system. Uh, we weren't sure how it was going to be compatible with everything else. Turns out it worked out pretty well. Uh, we recently had a situation where a customer sent in their, their utility bill. It didn't get to us for five days, and uh, so by the time it got to us, it was past the due date. Uh, the computer system records the payment the day we post it, and we can't backdate that because it's being done the day you're doing it. So, uh, and so the, the customer complained about late charge because they put it in the mail in, in a timely fashion. Uh, we don't have any way to reconcile it, uh, but we decided that it, since it's this online bill pay is working for the courts, that we would implement it for the utility bills. So now people will have, as of today, I guess, an alternative way of paying their bill. Uh, there is a, a convenience charge associated with that. It's 4%, uh, and, 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 and we don't charge it. It's charged by the service company. So they, they pay their bill, and so if you had a, you know, it, it, I don't know, what's a typical bill? Mine's pretty cheap. <laughs> it's a $70 bill, you know, you can pay an extra 28 cents in order for the privilege of uh, paying it online. <coughs> You'll recall several months ago that you approved the establishment of a policy whereby we offer additional compensation to employees who receive professional certifications. Uh, two people have taken advantage of that. Uh, one is uh, Lisa Kemper. She is a professional or cert certified court clerk now and has received the award that attended to that. The other is Pam Meyer, yes. who is now a certified city clerk. Now, the court clerk just sent a nice little plaque to Lisa. The um, City Clerks Association sends proclamations and asks that they be read into the record. So hold on to your seats. <laughs> Whereas, Pam Meyer has been a public servant to the city of St. Genevieve, Missouri and its citizens since 2003 and is currently active with the Missouri City Clerks and Finance Officers Association and whereas Pam Meyer has demonstrated a desire to enhance her skill as a municipal clerk by pursuing additional training with the Missouri City Clerks and Finance Officers Association as well as training within her Southwest Division and from Jefferson College and whereas the intent goal of the Missouri City Clerks and Finance Officers Association is to encourage and provide a certification program for continued education and personal development of Missouri municipal clerks and Pam Meyer is a perfect example of what can be achieved as a municipal clerk and whereas Pam Meyer having demonstrated her dependability leadership and desire to learn was awarded the designation of Missouri registered city clerk by the Missouri City Clerks and Finance Officers Association on October 
the, the second, 2018. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed that on this day, October 2nd, uh, that the city of St. Genevieve, which is now the 10th, the 11th, <laughs> the city of St. Genevieve recognizes the accomplishment and designation of Missouri Registered Clerk as achieved by Pam Meyer. So, congratulations. It's been a pleasure. <laughs> Finally, um, Thank you. tomorrow, starting tomorrow, the University of Memphis, the University of Memphis is like the seismic research university for this part of the country, uh, and maybe for the whole country. Uh, and, and, and they're going to be doing some seismic testing. So they're going to be going around town, they're going to put this instrument on the ground, and they're going to hit the ground with a hammer and see what kind of readings they get because they're measuring the subsurface conductivity of the impact vibrations. That's all I know. Uh, but I'm letting you know, and whoever might be watching, that uh, if you see people running around town banging on the ground with a hammer, it's okay. <laughs> uh, that concludes my report. Thank you. Bob? Uh, this 5th uh, district is sequestering. Can you run through it? Yes. Just okay. When the downtown TIF was first established, um, it, to provide an incentive for the conservation of buildings within the TIF district, it's a conservation slash economic development TIF. There are three reasons you can do a TIF, those two and blighting. Well, we didn't blight downtown. Uh, so the idea is that a developer buys a building, owns a building, comes in with a plan to make improvements to the building uh, and, and under the TIF he can recapture the portion of his expense for the, the eligible expenses from a note that the city gives him and, 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 and the note calls for payments out of the increment which is created by his investment. So we established it in 2013 the increment was the 2012 tax base both for real estate, two elements, and sales tax. The pilot is the real estate and economic opportunity taxes are the eats. And if the project goes as planned, if the real estate value should rise and the sales tax above the 2012 base should increase and the money that's available is then used to pay on that note. <coughs> Any money that remains in this special fund that's set up, the special allocation fund, after that is available to the city to make improvements within the district. The problem is that the nonprofit organizations bought up significant properties in the, in, in the district, a nonprofit organization, and removed those properties from the tax rolls. And the Lucent building became vacant, and the owner of the Lucent building requested a reduction in its assessed valuation because it's now not productive. And that was done. The TIF called for both the project to meet its base and for the base of the overall district to be met. And when those properties were taken off the tax rolls or significantly reduced, the 2012 base for the payment in lieu of taxes, real, the real estate taxes, wasn't being met. So no matter how successful the project may have been, a distribution couldn't be made for the failure of the overall district to meet the base. We later got an opinion that we could consider the sales tax and the real estate base separately and if the, the sales tax base got, got met and the project base got met we could make a distribution for sales taxes. So the two projects that we have weren't getting distributions as they had anticipated because the base wasn't being met. By revising the boundaries and 
and removing the not-for-profit projects and originally removing the, the Lucent building, we would have brought the base back down to where it would function. Well, along the way, a property owner said, you know, I would love to use the TIF, but it's not functioning. Uh, I would like to set up my own TIF. I don't know if you can do that. So his lawyer and, and, and Gilmore Bell got together and decided that, that, that you could revise the boundaries of the TIF and sequester individual properties so that they are kind of isolated. They're, they're no longer subject to the base, the overall TIF district base being met. They're only subject to their real estate and sales tax base being exceeded. So they're going to they're be set aside. I think they're going to be a few of those. And we've had we've got basically the, the Lucent building, the uh, I call it the Monia building, Monia building. The, uh, a few projects that that have and and. and and maybe three other people who have requested it. So I think there's going to be five or six possible sequestered pieces of property. Uh, and if they then do projects, they would only have to worry about meeting their own real estate and sales tax base in order to get to, what was to get reimbursement. Year? 2012. Can't, that can't change. It's every. It's 2012 forever. Well, for the next 20 years. So each property then would be based on their 2012 tax productivity. Right. So if you if you if you a hundred thousand dollars worth of sales taxes, that would be extraordinary uh, in 2012, and you collected one hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars, then there'd be a twenty-five thousand dollar increment that would go into the special allocation fund and be available for for for, for paying them back. So if they were making it. Be zero. Audubon was zero. Uh, ALS Pewter was zero. For the sales tax, obviously the real estate tax was there. So who incurs the cost each time one of these parties wants to basically set up their own district? It's being done as part of this this process we're, we're doing. Now, should somebody come in that doesn't get it done this time right. and say, I want to I want the same treatment? It would be up to this board to decide whether or not to do that. You, you don't ever have to do it again. But you would reconvene the TIF Commission, as we just did, and consider that next request. Seems like everybody would want to do that then. Well, you might not want to do it because you're going to. I, I, rec I will, would recommend that they have to pay the cost of reconvening the TIF Commission. And it's going to be oh, probably $5,000. Because we got 300 letters have to go out, and, and 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 notices have to be posted, and lawyers have to be hired, and it's. You know, uh, Thank you. Well. Any other questions? David, you're up. and zoning. Joe's not here to hear that. Um, we did have a board of adjustment meeting for the first time in I believe four years and there was a variance approved. Uh, floodplain management, new maps were received so you're going to hear more about this in upcoming meetings. Uh, they're in, they go from preliminary status to pending status and they have to be read into uh, the new numbers have to go into ordinance be read twice before February 15th. Uh, so more information to come there but that's on the uh, horizon. Uh, property maintenance, you see some numbers there. I added some additional uh, percentages down at the bottom so you can kind of see how things are rolling. Um, did review 31. As I review more, if you remember when I started this, I said we would try to review the worst first. So a lot of them are just falling under really no issue. Like there's a little bit of paint missing and that's really not a code violation. Um, so. 
to date, no enforcement action has been required. People have been voluntarily complied. One, one citation has been issued, but you know, you know that wasn't code enforcement. Right. Yeah. Yeah. There are a few that have stretched out, and I'm working with them, talking with them, trying to get enforcement. But there are several that have also complied nicely. So, and you have the numbers there. Uh, any questions on that? I have one other thing I wanted to bring up to y'all. Yes, sir. Flood insurance rate map. I thought that would give you a little more insight into this and actually how it's working out. Yeah. So not on the staff report, but something else that falls under uh, this position is rental properties. Uh, we have an ordinance on the book that requires us to send letters to every rental unit, um, which I looked up. There's approximately 875 units in the city. That could be anything from a house to an apartment to uh, Butterfield. So, um, and we have to send a letter to each one. I sent one to each owner, not each unit. So it was about 300 letters spent, I don't know, four or five hours quite a bit of paper, postage, so on. And so that got me to thinking, you know, this is a little bit more of a digital world we live in. Maybe we shouldn't be sending letters out as much as just posting that information. And we do post it also online and in the paper for two weeks. Uh, we asked for rental registration. Um, that led me to call a few other municipalities, Festus, Perryville, um, a few others, and find out what they do, um, which also led me into a, a what do they do as far as occupancy inspections? What do they do as far as um, enforcement of occupancy inspections? How do they keep track of rental properties? Um, and how our ordinances compare to those municipalities? What kind of work are we doing that we really don't need to do? What do we need to do that we're not doing? So in talking with Martin about that, I thought it might be uh, opportune to pull together a committee of some sort um, to talk about rental, landlord registration, occupancy inspections, uh, whether they're required, the costs, nuisance reporting, um, things like that. Some of you have brought up other issues like, um, and this couldn't all be talked about maybe in one committee, but the number of occupants in a house, things like that. Um, but just wanted to kind of throw it out there to you all. Yes, sir. I understand uh, our Main Street property, there was a development at a recent municipal court. I mean, I know that so, Ms. Gegg showed up. And basically what's taken place since then or what? I wasn't there, but I was told the warrant was stayed until the 18th of this month, which means she's required to show back up because they needed more information. I have since sent that information to our prosecuting attorney. Because we've incurred some costs on that property. And Send her a bill for approximately $2,300. She has 30 days to pay it. Yeah, and if she doesn't pay it. If she doesn't pay it, then we'll we send that to the county the collector. Buck, did you have a question? No. Okay. I wanted to, uh, you know, uh, that. yeah, and I, and I had some questions about that because that's going to, she's going to be in court next week and maybe, hopefully, maybe, yeah. but uh, like I say, I, that wasn't on, that was a long process. So, uh, but uh, we'll, we'll see how that plays out, you know, but the, the nuisances have been abated, mm -hmm. you know, there's, there's a cost. I really doubt if she'll have the money to pay us. So hopefully, you know, I don't know, just with the laws we have and things, it's very difficult. So, but I wanted to get back at this, this rent with the rental property yes. issue. Uh, I think it's a good idea. I think, uh, you know, talk to Jimmy and there's a lot of, there's ordinances and codes. Uh, we've seen this and when we went to this, you know, with our enforcing, getting people to take care of the properties we just weren't doing it because we we're afraid to or for whatever reason, but I think this is something we need to visit. And I'm all in favor of it. I don't know, and, I, and I'm not here to, I think, you know, I'm, I want to encourage 
rental property and, and, and land, you know, landlords, but I think there has to be accountability, not only with the land landlords, but the people that are renting these properties. Uh, so I think that's something we need to really visit. And I think we need to put this out. And I wanted to see what the board thought about that. You're in agreement with that. If you're going to have a committee, I'd like to be on it. Well, that's what I was saying. I was we're, I was hoping because one of the aldermen, either I was going to appoint him or I'd like a, a, a volunteer. So to, to be on this committee, and then we're going to, I think we need to have a couple landlords on the committee and then some Maybe some tenants. Some tenants. Uh, yes. Some people live in the city. So, mm -hmm. but uh, I like to be on the committee as well. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. And David, you'll guide us all through that. I would take it. Yep. We'll work together to nominate some people and. Right. Right. Okay. And and I want to. I, I don't want to just get people that that always are here and want to be on a committee all the time. We need to think outside. I'd like to get a a, a good mix of people on this board. You know, I know it's difficult, not everybody wants to volunteer, but let's challenge some people, talk to them, and, and try to encourage some people to be on this to, for the betterment of the city. We have some responsible landlords who have... We do. Absolutely. Express that was the state concern language. about the way our codes are structured. So I think we know who they are. We can ask them to serve. They, they'd be willing to serve. Right. So. Absolutely. So we'll work together, get that yeah. committee going. All right. That'd be great. Thank Anything any else? Any other questions? Know? Great job. Thank, Thank you. you yeah. Appreciate Thank it. Well, uh, Kenny took off. I take it he had an emergency. <laughs> so, right. so, Gary? Y'all have Kenny's report? Uh, yes, sir. Is yes. there any <coughs> questions you have about it? Uh, well, we sent the second, second payment to the... Uh, Kenny's the, coming back. Oh, okay. So, that's all right, Gary. Let's go ahead and hear your report, and then we'll put the... Uh, I sent back. the right one this month. Did you? Yeah. <laughs> And it starts <coughs> off as normal, mowing weedy, which we are finally slowing down now. Uh, we've been starting to get a lot more other smaller things completed that need to be done. We've done patching the last couple of days. We did a couple of days last week. Everything I've asked from the bottom of the lease, we've got a patch. Yep. So that's great. So yeah. Appreciate that. Been working on some street lights downtown. We had issues with some of them. and. Uh, with a couple rain days we've had, we've started making some new ones because we were out. I want to thank you on behalf of my ward constituents for taking care of that, especially on my side of town. Thank you. The way sign, wayfinding signs are complete. Uh, we were missing a couple. Lawrence got them. We got the rest of the caps we didn't have, so everything is done on them. Been doing maintenance on moors, equipment and did overseeing and the paving projects went, went pretty well. And I want to thank Gary for being more involved in our street projects than maybe that we have been in the past because he, he stays on it, catches things, it's, it's, it's done and a good this, job. And this one was a little different than the last couple because the guy that did the jobs was no longer with the company so and he didn't leave them much as far as notes and that went so yeah but well we didn't did that yes you did so it, it <laughs> turned out okay there was a couple rough moments in there but it all worked out <coughs> yeah. i got a question for you uh I've already been to the levy board about this and got one of their, uh, Vern's going to help me with this, but on October 21st, uh, no, October 20th, Saturday, October 20th at 11 o'clock, I want to do uh, an informational meeting down, down in, at Washington and 2nd, and I would love for you if you would be there, you know, sure. officially or unofficially. Uh, sure. There's a lot of questions about this pump, when it gets set up, uh, why we flood, and I just, I'm going to start out there anybody that wants to be there at 11 o'clock uh, I'll bring a van down there we're, we're gonna work there we're gonna it's gonna be hands-on we're gonna get close to the ditch we're gonna look at the levees we're gonna go out to the out to the levee uh, Vern says he'll have somebody out there maintenance people out there they'll open it up and explain to people how the pumps work uh, and so everybody has a good understanding of, of what we do in a, in a flood event you know and it's good timing because right now we're we're 
the Mississippi River is is over flood stage. Yeah. You know, we so may be closing gate. And if you noticed, if you noticed down in the also the, the water because the gates are closed at the dam, the, the water's backing up. If you look under the Main Street Bridge, you'll see water starting to back up in the town. Gates are closed. I don't know. I'm, I would I would think the the, the not the our gates. The creek gates. The creek gates oh. on the levee because the, of the, the dam into is, the river. The water's coming up, so otherwise the yeah, river's not just about closing the gates uh, Sunday afternoon. Yeah, Saturday or Sunday. Yes. So it'll be good timing. I mean, hopefully we won't have any significant rain, but that's right. part of the problem is when that water's up here, we're backed up, and then we have to pump. So it'll be a good opportunity because there are some questions I want everybody to understand. And can we do better? Because that, that pump we always talk about. Because Washington, when the water's up on the other side, we got to pump it across in certain situations. So, but want everybody to see that. What time again was that, sir? That'll be at 11 o'clock on October the 20th. <coughs> We're going to meet at Washington and Second Street. That's okay. But Gary, you'll be there, yep. and then Vern and some other people from the levy uh, okay. work on the levy. So, anybody else who wants to come? So, Gary, is there anything? Uh, Somebody had mentioned this to me up on Ridgeway with the paving that we get up there. There's a great uh, about middle ways down through there on the north side. Uh, I think you've seen it, Paul, that steel grate there that drops down. Yeah, that, that's a yeah, that's a problem up there. There are old sewer grates, but it, it's so low. I don't I don't know what we could do. Yeah. You know, you Any know what I'm talking about. Back on Ridgeway. On the dead end part, or no? Okay. Up right out in front of Mike Nicholson's okay house. You can. Oh, look at that! I wouldn't okay. wear. But it's it's the storm sewer. Storm sewer. Yes. Right. Okay. It's, it's just a low spot. It's low. Yeah. 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 It's, okay. It's been paving. And it's, I mean, it's a big sum. I'm saying. Oh, because it takes it in. Okay. Yeah. 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 Bring it up. Uh, Y'all can remember about those two uh, residences on Ridgeway that we still got two pieces of curb to put in. Okay. It's that's the brought up Dan when we was doing that and it's a different mix and so it wasn't like they could just run from there up there to do it. But it's not forgot about. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. <coughs> Chief. <laughs> so what's the Good evening, everybody. Uh, should have a report in front of you. Uh, we didn't have a whole lot of stuff going on last month, which is good because we had a whole bunch of calls. We went from being below our point of last year to 20, our 12 calls above last year's time. So we had 26 calls in the month of September. Uh, Probably one of the things I want to bring to your attention is the uh, firefighter of the month this month was Bob Bonnell. If you've noticed the last three or four months, Bob Bonnell, if you notice the last three or four months, we've gotten into some of the command staff and we've had one guy with 36 years, one guy with 45, Bob's got 40, and I'll be the last one they put on the page next year and I'll have over 30 on it too. So we've got a lot of guys with a lot of years that are running your department. We're real proud of that. Uh, for what it's worth, I did have contact with the uh, Rosenbauer local rep again on our truck today, and he actually sent me pictures. It is in Minnesota again. It's behind schedule, and there's not a whole lot we can do about it. it it's just they're that busy right now. Uh, I have been talking to him about some things they can do to keep us happy, possibly extended warranties and things like that. But obviously, before I can commit to anything, they have to say yes, and I have to bring it back to you guys. Right now, they're talking anywhere from 45 to 60 days behind. So I expressed, as I put in my notes here, expressed my disapproval of the, the time frame because we had a promise and it's not keeping up with the promise. Any questions? Yeah, we had a, a small stove fire. It was out when we got there in one of the apartments. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Okay, before we leave reports, uh, I just got cut off the presses. It's not for you. Okay. It, it deals with smoking, so maybe it does have something to do with it. Uh, Donnie informed 
and that we secured the Knights of Columbus Hall for the meet the, for the public hearing on the smoking issue. Uh, and so it's get, it's set for 6:30 p.m. November the first at the KC Hall. Thank you very much. Any committee reports? Public comments? Takes us to the consent agenda. Martin, did you say 6.30 for that meeting? On the first? Yes. <clears throat> approval, Mayor. Okay. Got a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Very good. Takes us to old business. Uh, the second reading of bill number 4242, an ordinance amending the original agreement with Dominant, Wade, and Morchin Incorporated, TWM, to provide a web-based mapping platform and geographic information systems for the city of St. Genevieve. Motion approved. Second. I'd like to have a roll call vote, please. Alderman Smith? Yes. Alderman Mooney? Yes. Alderman Donovan? Yes. Alderman Jokers? Yes. Alderman Jones? Yes. Alderman Stoopy? Yes. Six yes, zero no's, two absent. Bill number 4242 now becomes ordinance 4176. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Bill number 4243, an ordinance approving a memorandum of agreement with Alliance Water Resources Incorporated, Missouri Corporation, to modify the initial professional service agreement date adjusted August 12, 2010. Second. I have a roll call vote. Alderman Stoopy? Yes. Alderman Jones? Yes. Alderman Jokers? Yes. Yeah. Alderman Donovan? Yes. Alderman Mooney? Yes. Alderman Smith? Yes. Six yes, zero no's, two absent. Bill number 4243 now becomes ordinance 4177. Takes us to bill number 4244, an ordinance of the city of St. Genevieve, Missouri, authorizing a no okay. parking okay. restriction on the south side of Progress Parkway, starting at the entrance to Progress Sports Complex and extending 260 feet east towards State Highway M. Motion to approve. Second. Have a roll call vote, please. Alderman Jokers? Yes. Alderman Donovan? Yes. Alderman Mooney? Yes. Alderman Smith? Yes. Alderman Jones? Yes. Alderman Stoopy? Yes. Six yes, zero no's, two absent. Bill number 4244 now becomes ordinance 4178. Alrighty. Uh, before I read this bill, 4245, our second reading is concerning the, the municipal judge uh, going from a elected to a appointed. Uh, I've had two people approach me that are feeling that they've, you know, they don't have the right to pick a pick the judge. They think it's their right. Now, actually, one person in in one person face to face, but the other one was just social media. Uh, now, for the record. I don't want to do that to anybody, but uh, and looking at this for for what's best for I believe for the city and our city court, I think doing this is is just what we need to do. And we also put in some provisions with the uh, guidance from from Mark, you know, to make sure that this is is a licensed attorney qualified to practice law within the state, you know, and also they must be a resident of the state. Uh, also, he or she must be at least 21 years of age and not or not reaching his 75th birthday or before his or her 75th birthday. He or she may not serve as a municipal judge for more than five municipalities at one time. Uh, he or she may not hold any other office within the city government. And he or she shall be considered holding a uh, part-time position and such may accept within requirements of the Code of Judicial Conduct, Supreme Court Rule Number 2, other employment uh, and with those provisions I feel that the comment was that well you could set your court up how you want it you know and I don't believe that I believe for first of all for lifting the the ordinance the requirement to live in the city we needed to do that because it just shrank our the amount of people that that can even run for this position I think it opens up the opportunity to even you know even to get a judge from out of town I I'm not opposed to that I think that's a good idea because I think it, it there again it just it, it you know 
having somebody from in town, there's more of a chance you can have favoritism and stuff like that. So, and I'm not saying there's anything wrong with our judge here. Uh, Rob does a great job. Uh, but I, I think as far as this city, I think it's the right thing to do. And, and, and I just wanted that for the record, you know, so, but Buck, do you have anything? I have one person that approached me about that too. And once I explained things to them, right. that I think they, they were clear on it. And, and, and I've been, and been to our city court. I don't know if any of you has been to the to city court and see how it runs. Uh, I think it's, it's doing really well. Uh, everybody's doing a great job. Uh, Eric, uh, do you see a problem with this? No, you know, how we're doing it? So. And Mayor, I, I agree with you 100%. I think this is this is the, the way to go. Um, but I think there is a lot of misconceptions and about things out there in the public. And I've been, you know, trying to do my best on the Facebook to try to <laughs> educate the people about why we're doing it. And, and um, that said, I don't know if we if if it wouldn't be better if if we had I don't know if, if you could do this or not, but have a more of a public discussion about it. Because I think there's a lot of people that initially are really opposed to this. And I think maybe it's education. a little bit of education might help. Well, you could table the matter and we could schedule a public hearing. Are, Can't table a second reading? We have to pass an ordinance pretty shortly to for the to set the election date and it states in there what it it states in there who's running and he is up for election in April so I, I think it'd be a good idea to, to talk to the public about it but uh, I think we need to get it done for that reason because you're pushing up against the timeline to uh, to um, uh, put the notice out for candidates and um, I would my suggestion is is and I was I was hoping that somebody would show up here tonight in opposition to this and uh, and personally I think on the or have anything to say about it mm -hmm. and because uh, this was has been on Facebook and Don's put it out and and everybody's had the opportunity I really feel that this is the right thing to do for our court. I really do. Well, and I agree. Yeah, this actually is the appointment. Elections, Pardon me? In the municipal elections, it seems like there's a margin of 20 people that, that decide the, the, the fate of, of our candidates. Uh, I would be curious to see how many of the people, and I, there's no way to know, uh, that, are, that are hesitant about this have actually gone and voted in any municipal elections. It's uh, the voter turnout for an um, April election is incredibly low. Incredibly. You got it. Well, Mayor, I think at one time the the chief of police was in elected position in this city. Yes. Sir. So you know that, and I told him that it's about the other people that are uh, appointed by the board, the clerk, the, the city attorney. You know, I, I, feel, I personally feel good about going along with the second reading. Yeah. You know, you guys decide. But I agree. So what is the appointment process, or who would appoint that position? Well, it's in here. Well, it's an appointment by the mayor with the uh, consent of the, of the board. Yeah, the board, will, the board it's just like when, when we did Mark, you know. Mm -hmm. I find a candidate, you guys look at all that, and you decide who we're going to have as, as our, our judge. And I think that's worked well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Mark, as you you said before, it's considerably more common for it to be an appointed position rather than an elected position. Absolutely. It's rare to be elected. Yes, yeah, it's, it's absolutely uh, the way all municipalities are moving because we just don't have a whole lot of applicants, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and um, there's not there's a uh, maybe three or four licensed attorneys in that live in the city, maybe less. And you probably only have one that's interested, and that's your current judge. It's not, um, uh, I mean, it's a nice feather in your cap to be a municipal judge, and, and it's good work, but it's uh, uh, it's also evenings, and, and uh, it can be difficult. So uh, uh, you, you uh, limit your applicant pool by making the, the residency requirement fair. Um, but, you know, it doesn't stop the board from uh, only approving somebody who's a resident. You know, it doesn't mean you 
you can't, as a board, the majority of the board, to say, well, if we're, we're going to favor a resident of the city. I mean, that's entirely appropriate when that day comes when we make the appointments. But uh, it's a you know, small cost of the election, and and um, and if, if your current judge, he, he, if you have a judge you really like and he wants to move out of town, and then, he, then he's going to have to quit. You know, and, and that's not an ideal situation either. <coughs> I'm making a motion to approve. Second. I'd like to have a roll call vote. Alderman Smith? Yes. Alderman Mooney? Yes. Alderman Donovan? Yes. Alderman Jokers? Yes. Alderman Jones? Yes. Alderman Stoopy? Yes. Six yes. Zero no's, two absent. Bill number 4245 now becomes ordinance 4179. Thank you. Takes us to new business. Uh, bill number 4248, an ordinance approving a bid proposal from Axon Enterprises Incorporated for the purchase of four tasers in the amount not to exceed $5,512 for their state for the St. Genevieve Police Department. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any other business? Any discussion with the... I have nothing. I've said everything to you guys. You guys have anything else to say? With that, I'd like to uh, make a motion that we go into closed session for personnel matters and real estate. Well, they have to make a motion. I mean, I would like to entertain a motion. <laughs> I will make that motion. Okay. Second. I have a roll call vote. Alderman Smith? Yes. Alderman Mooney? Yes. Alderman Donovan? Yes. Alderman Jokers? Yes. Alderman Jones? Yes. Alderman Stupy? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you.